thought I'd do a little bit of a little bit of a meditation slash inquiry and utilizing the focusing technique and utilizing elements uh, of IFS and sort of combining them together into one and creating, as I said, a, a meditation out of that. My hope will be that you kind of see this, um, you engage with it, you notice its effectiveness, and then that sort of serves as a springboard for you to go and see a therapist, see someone who's qualified to work one-on-one -on -one with people, uh, pick the books up, um, etc. And if this video is helpful, you can just keep coming back and watching it. So if you haven't heard about the focusing technique or if you don't know anything about it, if you don't know anything about IFS, then I recommend just going back and watching uh, some of the previous videos, the last couple of videos that I made, which have been about focusing and which have been about the emotional work that I've doing, been doing. The reason I, I want to do this is because you just don't, you don't see this in spiritual circles. You, at least you don't see it um, packaged in this way and packaged and taught in a way that's simple, it's clear, it's direct, and it's practical, and it actually works. And it actually gives you tools, it actually gives you a method to go away and do it yourself. Um, it's just lacking. Again, I've, I've said this in other videos, but mostly what you have around is people just saying, feel your emotions and go into the body and feel the energies, let the energies come and let them go and be with what is. And they're all great pointers. And they're all valuable to a certain degree, but they, in my opinion, in my experience, they just they just don't go deep enough, um, and they don't lead you to the places that need to be looked at, and that need to receive your care, need to receive your love, receive your compassion, which ultimately brings about flexibility, freedom, whatever word you want to use. So, I'd like you to just bring something up, anything. It could be a stress, a stressor you're having in your life. It could be anxiety you're having. It could be your partner doing something to you. It could be someone pissed you off at work today. But I just wanted to choose something, anything. I'll give you a couple of seconds to, to choose that, just to think about it before I actually get started with the meditation. But really make sure you can feel that, so you can feel the energy of it. Um... A lot of times when you bring up situations, especially when you're working in therapy, you can almost go numb. Um, and that's a separate part to look at. But just for the purpose of this video, just try and bring something up that you can you can feel the energy behind it, whether that's you feel the resentment towards that person or you genuinely you feel that, that anxiousness towards that situation. Whatever it is, just think about it. <laughs> And you can just pause the video anytime if you need to think or ponder a little bit more on it. And just close your eyes. And just settle. And just take a few deep breaths in just to settle the body. Just three or four will do. Now, I know we talk a lot about no self and there's no background and, and all of that, but we're going to utilize this view um, because views are useful. And that's that's the thing with this whole awakening process is you see that reality is malleable. There's no one view called no self that's correct. You can evoke or at least think about other views um, to be helpful. And so for this, for the purpose of this, I want you to be an observer. Okay, so... I want you to take that situation, that person, whoever it is, and just kind of create a collage in your mind. If you think linguistically, you can think in words or you can think in pictures if you want as well. And just think of the whole situation as a whole. Okay, so there's 
various different things about the person who pissed you off or the situation that's happening, whatever is going on in your life. There's, there's thousands of bits of information that could be processed. This person, he said this to me, I'm feeling, you could be feeling angry. You could also be feeling sadness. You could be feeling jealousy. You could have a bunch of memories about what happened. You could have so much bits of information about what you're actually feeling about the situation. But what we're doing is we're not focusing on one of those bits of information. Like the anger is one of those bits of information. The image of the person is another bit of information. What you're going to do about it is another bit of information. Your psychoanalysis of what's going on with you and what's going on with the situation, that's also not what we're looking at. And so just recognize that that's kind of the collage. Okay, so just kind of put that collage in your mind, whatever it is, all of the bits of information, all of the, all of the streams of information that are coming out of this situation and just kind of put it in your mind's eye and sort of watch that. And if you, again, if you need to pause the video, just, just do that. And so what we're doing now is once we kind of see the situation as a whole, we're trying to, in focusing, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get what's known as the felt sense of the problem. So it's not necessarily um, the immediate emotion you're feeling in that moment. And that's the emotion we're told to, to sit with, right? And we can sit with that for eternity and nothing will ever change. But what we're trying to do is get the felt sense of, of the whole thing. And so the felt sense will be, it's almost like an extremely hazy feeling on the edges of the whole situation. And one way you can try to evoke that is by asking yourself the question, what's bad about the whole thing? What's, what's bad? What's the bad thing? What feels bad about this whole thing? Not one bit of information about the whole problem, but the problem as a whole, the person, the, 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 the situation as a whole. What's the felt sense around the whole thing? See if you can even tap into that. And what you're going to notice, it's going to be really, really hazy. It's going to be very, very fuzzy. And it's not going to be very clear. And when you can sort of begin to feel this kind of felt sense of the whole thing, you can almost try to um, label it. And the label doesn't have to be accurate. The label could be un a feeling of unwantedness, a feeling of mistiness. It could be whatever word uh, you want to use. But you should cycle through those words and see which of the words or which of the labels locks in or clicks into the emotion and you'll know which one is right because the body will give you a yes you will literally feel an expansion in your chest to where your body's like yes that's what i'm feeling that's what i'm actually feeling about this whole situation you'll feel uh, even if it's very slight you'll just feel a slight release it's just your body saying this is it yes that's what it is so just look for that hazy sort of um felt sense to the whole situation So the example I gave for me, it was, I was angry at my friends, at my friend for doing something to me. I was pissed off and I thought it was about the anger, but I put the whole situation up, all the bits of information. And I asked myself, what, what is it about the whole thing? The picture as a whole, what is it that, what's that, that hazy felt sense behind the whole thing? And the feeling that came up for me was, as I've mentioned previously, it was unwantedness. I was like, oh, that's strange. But the second, I went through many labels before that, but the second I said unwantedness, my body just said, yes. You just feel it. You feel it in your chest. Yes, that's what it is. And when you have that, I know I'm going through this fast, but I'm kind of relying on you to kind of pause the video. But when you have that, when you find a label that really sticks to the felt sense of the whole thing, you can ask the question again, what's bad about that? What's, what is it, what it is, what is it that's bad about the unwantedness? You're trying to kind of get more clarification. You're trying to clarify the felt sense. So unwantedness was a label that was right. Yes, but could it be more accurate? 
And what is it about the unwantedness that's so bad? What is it about being the feeling of unwantedness? What is it about that? And again, you feel into that. You feel the body. You listen into the body. This, that's exactly what this is. You're trying to listen to the body. The body has huge stores of intelligence um, that we just do not listen to. And so we're practicing listening to the body. And so ask, what is it about that label that's bad? And so for me, it was, okay, so I asked, what is it, what is it about this unwanted, hazy unwantedness? What is this? What is it about this? That's so bad. And I few confusing for a while and a few labels popped up and then immediately what popped up was valuelessness. Body again, another huge release, valuelessness. And then it just kind of spiraled then as I don't feel valued. And then it spiraled again. I just, I'm not of value at all. And you're kind of working your way down through it, trying to clarify the felt sense beneath the whole situation. And again, for me, what my friend did, it was never about me being angry at, at him. Although that was a defense mechanism, a protective mechanism that arose in the moment and it was lingering and following me around everywhere. But that served a function, it served a role. It was simply protecting me from feeling unworthy. It was simply protecting me from feeling like I had no value at all. Like I was totally valueless, unworthy, not good enough. And so I really feel that felt sense of whatever your problem is, of the whole thing. And just try to clarify it more and more and more. And just try to get more and more accurate until you find that label that really points to what your body is feeling. And as I said multiple times, you're going to feel an expansion and a release in your body once you do that. you're kind of struggling at the start something you could immediately work with is what's you could just paint your whole life what what's wrong with my life right now and you can feel something off and follow the breadcrumbs down and see where that leads what's the felt sense of that what's the bad what is bad what is the feeling the bad feeling about this whole thing again look for a label that really fits allow the body to say yes once the body does say yes inquire a bit more Ask the question again, what's bad about that again? And it brings you down further. And then you're at the root of the issue. And now you're at the emotions that you're really at the emotions now that just haven't been looked at for your whole life. But the problem with spiritual teachers is, in my opinion, is we're all just taught to sit with these, these surface emotions and that's it. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing about going below the surface and feeling emotions that you've never actually felt before in your whole life. And there's, a, there's techniques, there's proven techniques, there's scientifically validated techniques, there's evidence-based practices that are proven to lead you down there. It, it doesn't, it's not as simple as just sitting with them. And so the whole situation has changed now. The, the whole thing has changed. The whole, the whole paradigm has changed completely. Because what I thought was about me being angry at my friend was just not about that. What it's really about was I feel completely devalued as a human being. And beneath that again was I just don't feel worthy inherently. I just don't feel like a valuable person. And by him doing that, it just triggered that. And in order for my body not to feel that, the anger came up as a protector to get in the way, to block it off, to defend myself. And so you're getting down into the body. You're getting down into the deepest areas when you do this kind of work, when you really tune into your body and ifs can work really well here because if you're, if you're kind of struggling with the felt sense um the combination of ifs and focusing is really powerful because if you can't access that felt sense if you're getting confused or whatnot I, i'd still recommend it i'd still keep going with just the focusing because it will lead you where it needs to lead you but if you're still struggling you can begin to come into communication with, with the part itself. So if, if it's the angry part, 
I could have done IFS on the angry part and it would have led me to the exact same place. So I could feel the angry part in my body. I could ask, you know, I could really feel the anger. I was angry at my friend. Where do I feel that in the body? I feel it in the chest. I feel it in the throat. I feel it in the shoulders. And then you just really get to know that part. You literally go into conversation. It's a sub mind. You're going into conversation with the sub mind. And you're asking it, you know, um, what's your view on this situation? Getting to know it. Uh, it'll tell you what it views about this person and, and it'll tell you a whole lot if you just listen and allow it to speak from its own perspective. And then you can just keep getting to know it, keep asking it questions. You can maybe ask it what age it is, where did it get its role, where did it get its job. Most importantly, you should ask how you feel towards that part and make sure that you're feeling curious and compassionate about the part. Because if you're feeling judgmental and critical about that part of yourself, then it's just another part and they're clashing against each other. And so you really want to be in that space of neutral sort of compassion and curiosity. And so you ask the part. Finally, once you get to know it, you could ask it. What would happen if you just didn't do your job anymore? What would happen if you didn't get angry at my friend? <clears throat> what if you didn't get angry at him? Let's just call him Jim. What happened if you didn't get angry at Jim? You ask that part and feel into it. You're feeling into the energy of it. What would, what would happen if you just didn't, if you lost your ability to do that job? And feel that. What's there now? Immediately, I'd feel devalued. I'd feel unworthy. I'd feel... That's what will come up. And in IFS, what that is, is the anger was a protector and... It was protecting you from an exile underneath it, which is the unworthiness and the <coughs> devaluedness. And so now you're down to what's known as the exile. The exile is I just don't feel valued. And you see how, you see how focusing and you see how IFS, they just beautifully come together to bring you right down to that exile. It brings you right down to those emotions that you probably haven't felt in years. Maybe you haven't felt at all. Or you're feeling all the time, but you just don't recognize it. You just feel fundamentally unworthy as a human being. And what springs from that is anger, attention-seeking, people-pleasing, whatever it is, whatever the exile down there is, there's a whole bunch of systems, there's a whole bunch of parts built on top, layered on top of them, that are trying to manage that and are trying to suppress that feeling. And as a result, trying to manipulate the whole world. And so there you have suffering. Focusing and IFS are the two techniques that just drill right down to the core of why you are acting the way you're acting. Why, you're su why are you suffering the way you're suffering? Why are you feeling anxiety here? Why are you feeling anxiety when there's nothing actually cognitively wrong? You can think your way out of it all, all you want, but you're still feeling it. You can think your way out of your problems. You can philosophically analyze your problems till, till the sun goes down. You can do it all day long, but it does nothing. Because you just wake up the next day and you have the same problems. You have the same relationship problems. You have you just the same problems with commitment. You have the same problems with loyalty with your partner. You have the same problem with lashing out and getting angry at the most trivial of things. You have problems with drug abuse, drug addiction. It just keeps happening over and over and over again. And no matter how much philosophy you throw at that, dare I say no matter how much Buddhism you throw at that, and how much dharma you throw at that. It's just not going to get to the places where you're refusing to look. And in fact, Buddhism, meditation, can be the perfect distraction, can be the per perfect mechanism of suppression to keep you away from all of that. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be completely honest with yourself. And ask yourself, am I actually suffering? Am I using this as a crutch? Am I using this philosophy or this technique or this meditation practice as a crutch to transcend it and to go beyond it and to leave it alone and to just not look there? It will never work. It's just never going to work. Because they need to be looked at. They need to be held with compassion. They need, you need to go down there. You need to look at them. And when you do that, all the rest of whatever philosophy you're following, all of the rest of the Dharma, all of the rest of um, your meditation practice will just improve as a result of that. And the insights of no self and the insights of emptiness 
will penetrate down deeper and deeper and deeper into your embodied way of living. And that's really what matters, right? And so these two techniques, as I say, just blend perfectly together. They just go down so deep. They go down they touch exactly what needs to be touched with compassion. And that's, that's the other thing with this is compassion. You have to have compassion for yourself. There has to be compassion for all of these parts, all of these sub-minds, these hundreds, these thousands of sub-minds that are literally living in this space. You have to have compassion for all of them. It all comes back to compassion at the end of the day. I remember my therapist years ago <laughs> said, you know, um, you need to have more self-compassion. And I was kind of laughed. It's like self-compassion. This seems like, a, you know, a, an ethereal sort of a mystical kind of state. And it's completely wrong. Um, even if you read the literature on self-compassion, um, huge benefits, clinically speaking. So... If you just go back to where I was pointing, I was kind of guiding with the focusing and then with the IFS. And if you kind of get stuck with the focusing, incorporate the IFS and begin to come into communion with the parts. And maybe there's one of them that kind of works better for you. But once you find it and it clicks, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy how it's crazy how much it works. The things that used to trigger you just don't trigger you anymore. The things that used to cause you anxiety just don't cause you anxiety anymore. The points in life where you just didn't know what to do, you now know what to do. Because there's a trust within the system itself. You feel far more fluent. You feel far more, um, you feel far more dynamic in the environment itself. You feel far more flexible. You feel cognitively flexible. You feel the flexibility of this whole system because when there's schemas, when there's these tight trapped emotions and beliefs surrounding them emotions, when they're trapped in the nervous system, when they're trapped in the world, what you do from those thousands of parts is you project a world and you create a world from those parts. You, you literally create the whole world. You create people who you should distance yourself from. You create relationships that you shouldn't get involved in anymore. You create a dangerous romantic partner. You create parents who are I don't know, evil. You create so much things. You create a world where you're just not lovable, you're not worthy. You create the whole universe out of these parts. The whole world is an extension of them. And then, of course, you relate to the world through them, which then reinforces them. And you're, that's, that's your whole system. It's ex really complex, but your whole system is engaged and moving out of emotional suppression. I just don't, I just don't get how you can claim to practice Dharma or be a meditator, which involves the whole person. It involves the whole person. Dharma involves the whole the entirety of the human, of this. It involves the whole person. But how you can practice that while neglecting and completely severing other parts of yourself that you just won't look at. It's almost like a contradiction. It just doesn't work. And so my promise is that if you really drill down into this, if you really drill down into the body, if you really go down compassionately, drilling down doesn't sound too compassionate, but if you really go into the body compassionately, so much will open up. There's so much more fluidity. There's so much more spontaneity. And the aspects of... of no self, the aspect of, of um, non-dual realization, the aspect of emptiness, it just becomes intuitively and um, somatically more obvious. It just becomes bodily. It becomes deep down instead of up here. You just begin to live from that, as that, as the whole system, fluidly, flexibly. And that's just been my experience over the past couple of months and where it's leading. Um, so I can't, um, I can't recommend it enough. I know this has been a little bit of a ramble, but I hope the, um, I hope the inquiry was helpful. And <clears throat> again, Richard Schwartz's book, uh, No Bad Parts is really good. Uh, Eugene Glendon, uh, her 
his book his book on focusing is also really good um but yeah that's it for today hope it helped